Let's go to line number two. Marilyn, you're on the air. Good morning, Patty. How are you this morning? Doing okay, thanks. How about you? Good, thank you. Very interesting show so far. Um, I just want to talk about the recent floods on the Fort of War Peninsula and uh, how it pertains to this proposed project that Royal Energy GH2 is uh, wanting to put, you know, over our heads. Um, so everything runs downhill. I've said this, you know, a few times uh, once on your show, and I've, I've submitted to letters to the government officials. Uh, we live downhill from mountaintops. Uh, everything runs downhill when you got six million pounds of explosives that are uh, going to be used for the cement basis of these uh, monstrous wind turbines one kilometer from our homes. Uh, you're going to have everything removed from the mountaintops, the trees, the bog, everything that holds water back will now be coming at us. So we've seen the floods over the weekend. We've seen the roads washing out. We've seen brooks where there weren't brooks before. Um, you know, people, a couple had lost their house on the weekend. Uh, very unfortunate. My heart goes out to them. They didn't have insurance. Um, and, and if this project uh, proceeds, there will be mudslides and these homes will be going into the ocean. There's no doubt in my mind this will happen. So Mother Nature uh, just gave the government a little wake-up call, if you will, and I think it's time for them to start listening. Um, there's an area just where that house uh, was destroyed in Marches Point, when that road washed out, where that brook is. They're proposing turbines straight up from there, about a kilometer up from their house. And there's also a rock area on top of that hill, and when you look at it, you're looking at a massive hill of rocks that are falling into that road, some the size four by four, and I have a picture of it. And I've called Tony Wakeham, I've emailed Tony Wakeham, and I've emailed the mayor of the town of Cape St. George, and nothing has been done about that rock area. When you have blasting and heavy rains, one of these days, that mountain is going to come down. And whoever's on the road at the time will go over the embankment, which is right directly across the road. It's about a 100-foot drop. Very bad area. I've written to the government about this as well as part of my submission for the EIS. Um, next, I'm going to go on to EnviroWatch. They did an online wind forum on March 19th. Patty, were you able to listen in on that? No, I wasn't. I was tied up. But let me, just before we move on to EnviroWatch, yeah. are you saying yeah. that the landslide-related issue is related to wind projects because of the clearing of land to accommodate the turbines? Is that the link you're making? I'm saying the potential for mudslides in the future when there's no trees to hold back the so, water on top of those mountains from the blasting of the 6 million pounds of explosives because they're taking off our mountaintops, Patty. They're right behind our heads. These mountains are above us. Everything runs downhill. And, and what you've seen over the weekend is just an example of what will happen. Roads were washed out. Rocks were coming down. I mean, we've never seen this sort of destruction before. And when you take the bog off the top of the mountain, there's nothing holding the water back. If you want to save the climate and save the earth, you cannot destroy it to save it. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Okay? And, and trees, I mean, we need to plant trees. We don't need to be cutting them down and destroying our mountaintops. It just doesn't make sense, Patty. So the okay. Cornerbrook, Lark Harbor, yep. Cape St. George, these have nothing to do with wind. But what you're saying is with all the de-vegetation required for building the towers, that will lead to the potential for more of these events. That's... The summary. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, Patty. Yes. Okay. Um, so getting to EnviroWatch. So you never had a chance to see that uh, online public win, win forum. So on March 19th, EnviroWatch, who is an environmental group that started up, you know, um, as a result of these impending projects that, you know, are moving too fast, too big, and, and, and other things too, like, um, you know, fish farms and, and whatnot. Um, so they had a win forum on March 19th. It was an online forum, and they had three panelists, and, you know, they did a presentation, and people could call and ask questions. Um, so one of the panelists, was uh, Joan Baxter, and I don't know if you're familiar with her. She is a, um, a reporter from the Halifax Examiner, and she talked about the latest round of MOU signing in Hamburg, Germany. Have you 
been caught up to speed on what happened there, Patty? Yeah, I've seen the stories. Okay, perfect. So um, the gist of it was, um, you know, there were no offtake agreements signed, um, no offtake contracts signed at that particular uh, conference. And there was two players there. John Risley was there and Trent Beachy of Everwind. And the reporter that was there um, said that they were both pissed off. Um, you know, Trent, they asked Trent Beachy to do an interview and he said no comment. Like you want, they wanted to know how it went and he said no comment. And John Risley was complaining about governments. So both of them were pissed off. So they came out of there, obviously not happy with what, what, the way things went. Um, but she also talked about uh, Ravi Suit, who is the uh, one that's got the central project um, in the works. And he um, was, I guess, the, the CEO of Feronia Inc., and she said he has a very bad reputation as far as human rights violations go and land grabs and everything else that goes with it. Yeah, but we so, have control here. You know, what he's done yeah, elsewhere I, I hope, is I, not really... I hope, what? I hope. But, but what, what, are, what are the common theme was with these three and, and the projects proposed was that these three gentlemen were subsidy... Uh, harvesters. So this is subsidy harvesting projects. I mean, Ravi's from Hong Kong, and he's over here following the money. And when we first met John Risley at, at, at the meeting in Cape St. George on July 6, 2022, he was there and he said, I will not be using any government money for this project. This is all going to be my money and our money, but this is, you know, no, no, no provincial or federal money will be involved. And now it seems like the man cannot move without the subsidies from the government. So we've done a total U-turn here. And, and that is, you know, it just goes to show his character. Now, um, the second panelist was Robert Loader um, from Central. Let's just add and, to Mr. Risley's comments yeah. there for a second, okay. though. Right. So okay. you're right. He said, I'm not going to take uh, any government right. monies. But there was always in play at the exact same time the access to tax subsidies federally. Now, we still don't know how that's going to work. There's no firm definition of green because a project, a wind project in Nova Scotia is nowhere near as green as a project in this province. Why? Because we've got about 80% renewables versus in Nova Scotia, they've got somewhere in the neighborhood of 50. So they should not qualify for the same tax subsidies. Hopefully that definition is very tight because it's the difference between 15% and 40% tax breaks from the federal government. In addition to that... Mr. Risley did ask for and get a $128 million line of credit that is different than a upfront loan because he can use it when he wants and doesn't have to go back to the well time and time again, but it's still $128 million. So you're right. He said, we will not be getting that money. He never mentioned the tax subsidies, even though we all knew that they were in play. But yes, $128 mm -hmm. million is the number. It's all about the money, Patty. They're not here to, to do, any, do us any favors. Trust me. So Robert Loader, um, another panelist from, from Central, um, this, he was from Point Leamington, and he talked about the proposed wind farm in his area. And what was interesting, and it kind of set off a bell for me, is when he talked about the mayor from his area who wrote a letter of support for the project before the people even knew anything about it. So same situation as us. And then the community, once they found out the size and scope and everything else to do with this, this wind farm, wanted him to resend his letter of support until they, you know, could gather more information, have more consultations, etc. And what the mayor said to him was, you know, I won't be doing that. Uh, this is a done deal. And if we're not at the table, you know, we're not going to get anything. Now, the phrase, a done deal, we've been hearing this from day one. And I can tell the people of Newfoundland and Labrador that this is never going to be a done deal if you don't want it to be a done deal. They tell you this is a done deal, so you get on board. You feel like if you don't sign on, you're going to miss out. But it's all part of their strategy, and that's what they tell you from day one. And, and they have people have to be aware of how they're kind of controlling the narrative, and they have this master plan when they're coming into these areas. When we uh, met with John Risley, he um, 
wanted to fly us up to Haldeman County in, in, uh, in Hamilton, Ontario, and see a wind farm there. So all the leaders of the communities had the opportunity to go up. Now, by the grace of God, I had COVID, and I didn't go. And, I, and you know what? I thank God I didn't go because when the mayors came back and the leaders of the communities, most of them were quiet. They were so quiet, it was eerie. And I'll tell you why. We were part of what was called the port to port um, Vibrancy Fund. Um, it was called something else in the beginning, but then it, it turned into the, the, the Vibrancy Fund in the end because they didn't want anything to do with the environment side of it. So I dropped off it of, of that uh, committee because I didn't want to be a part of something that was going to destroy our peninsula. Okay, I'll but just give you the, a couple of more seconds yep. to wrap up your thoughts, Marilyn, because oh. I'm late. Okay, well, I, I won't go into that. I'll just say that, you know, um, as a part of the agreement in Haldeman, they weren't allowed to, uh, they had to remain neutral to receive any funds from this project. So they can't talk for and they can't talk against wind farms. They have to remain neutral. And if they don't, they won't receive any money. And that's why you don't hear from the mayors on the peninsula about this. They don't speak out about it. They're not allowed to. So they're dummied up. Uh, I will say this is too close of a relationship between the government, John Risley, Andrew Fury, Goody Hutchings, uh, Brendan Paddock, uh, George Fury. These people are all in bed together. They have been from day one. John Risley has been, um, you know, uh, okay. lobbying the government from day one. And one more thing, that is very important, very important. Article 28 of the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. We have the right to live in peace, and that's all we're asking for, okay? I appreciate your Thank time, you Marilyn. Much. Thank you for the call. Okay, you too. Okay, okay bye-bye. Bye. Uh, let's take a break. Don't go away.